live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, aspirational, international, keenly awaited, daily created, highly anticipated edition of the afternoon swing trading floor with your humble host, Jeremy Alexander Newsom, with another daily dose of mentally delicious brain food. Reminding each of you to love life, live life, and treat it. What's going on, Robin and friends? Fam, hope all are doing incredible. We got ourselves a fun market out there right now, which is good. I mean, it had to change at some point because the beginning of October sucked, <laughs> at least for me. However, I'll kind of go through and talk about just what else is out there and what else is happening. Really big day though. I did post in Slack and a lot of you got the message. I had to exit all of my swing trades today because all of them were profitable. Even if it was just by a few pennies, which in two instances it was, but every single trade that we were in was profitable, ladies and gentlemen. And per my rules, if that happens, I just got to get out of all of it. And even though one or two were just by pennies, the big news is they were down at one point. You know, Maxar Technology, LK uh, were both down at one point. So ha having those come back was a pretty big deal, I feel like. And uh, we'll talk through it all anyway today. So here is the SPY. And the SPY, I mean, realistically, just a, so far, a nice little trend. So nice little trend today. Things are looking pretty good for the most part. Kind of seeing it slowly inch higher. Here's the hourly chart and the hourly chart again, just a nice little calm, cool, collected trend. Just slowly grinding higher. We made a new high, we made a new low. It looks de decently strong. So my thought behind it is relatively simple buy the dip or well, whatever dip comes in, it should be a little bit viable. And right now the overall trend is bullish. So don't specifically fight it uh, on the spy. Now, again, you could get one day where something crazy happens and get this magnificent drop and then, you know, it does whatever it's going to do from there. That's one thing. And obviously could certainly occur, but my overall instinct is just to say, Hey, if you're playing this bullish, just kind of buy some dips. All right, the other market, here's the Q's. Q, 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 and let's see. All right, pull this up, give me four seconds. Why is that not loading? Oh, I have four of them, duh. That'll do it every time. And here's the Q's on the daily chart. So again, decent gap. You had four white candles in a row, so it's a black candle. Today it was a white candle gapping up. It's a retest gap, and we did a retest today. So just know that we can easily continue higher. Right now, things are not too extended, ladies and gentlemen, at all. They are not. Just keep in mind when, it's not, it's not an if, when we break above this resistance, just be knowing that I'll probably be looking to sell some of that positions, and then we can get a little bit of a bounce. I don't plan on buying a breakout. Uh, just because of how long we have been trading sideways and how much things have been kind of chopping around. It would be an all time high. So we'll see. Jill says gap fill before new high or after? Oh, that's a great question. I'm going to go with after. It's a fantastic question, my friend, my friend. Uh, I'm just thinking that since this one right here, what well, we got a little bit of a fill and we made a new high, not a new all time high, but just like a new high in general. Then we fill the gap. I think we're going to do the same thing. We're making a new high. Everyone just runs in bullish, and we have another little bit of a pullback. And we just kind of repeat that process. So it's a fantastic question. And again, I don't know. We'll find out. Like if we gap down tomorrow morning, if it's a really strong lower low, then sure, we could fill the gap pretty quickly. Here's the E minis. I talked about it yesterday, mentioned that this was likely just a resting candle. Still does look like a resting candle. Here's the hourly chart. And realistically, you just had a bunch of consolidation, trade sideways forever. I did have a few buddies that were playing the bounce off of 29.85 last night. 
So the 29.85 held up all night last night, and then we just bounced this morning, made a new high, and that was relatively that was relatively, relatively it. Danny says, "Is that a double bottom?" Uh, a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the greatest double bottom. It's kind of like a continuation of a trend, really. I mean, good run, good run up, a little bit of a consolidation, new run up, a little bit of a consolidation, new run up. So it's healthy. That's why I do think we can continue to go higher on the broader markets. I'm not specifically saying we have to go to zero. I don't think every time we've had drops, I don't think we're going to go to zero yet. The volume just isn't there. I don't see a lot of bulls really, really excited. That's how most bull markets end, my friends, is when everyone is super pumped, getting in all bullish, all excited, and then we get a little bit of a pullback. All right, so today is Thursday. So here's the transportation ETF, IYT. Michael says an end in euphoria. That's it, my friend. So IYT, last time I looked at it was back over here. And lo and behold, it's bouncing off support again. How crazy, huh? Look at how many times IYTs bounce off of 175. I haven't played it any of the time, just being honest. I don't really play the IYT, but we can look at it as a transportation ETF. It is fun to use. And this has certainly helped me with some of the trades that we've done, right? We've done option sales. We've done things like that. Sorry, I had a sneeze attack. So <laughs> we've done things like that. We're kind of trading out. It's holding up. The trend looks good. and. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not specifically going bullish right here on the IYT. If I am going to go long, it wouldn't be right here. You know, I'm looking at probably some pullbacks, some gap fills. So if you're not going bullish on some things, it's okay. You haven't missed the move. There will be other opportunities to go long on things, I can assure you. Cool. Any questions about the broader markets, ladies and gentlemen? Questions, concerns, thoughts, opposition, viewpoints. Otherwise, we're just going to dive right into these. Before we get too heavy, we're going to review uh, our swing trades. So let's just let's go do that really quick. And again, you by no means have to do this, but this has worked out really well for me in the past. Almost every single time this occurs, I've started to notice a pattern once I go up nicely across a bunch of trades, especially trades that were once losing, it's usually a good idea to just lock those in. So Maxar Technologies, obviously not the picturesque, perfect place that I would like to get out, but I'm a, we're gonna end up trying this one again at a better price. But got out today for two pennies of a game. So pretty much broke even, but it was profitable during parts of the day. And again, this was a whole one R swing. We got one penny from getting stopped out. One Abraham Lincoln from losing an R. And then it rallied all the way back to getting back in the positive a little bit. That was the big one. When I noticed that this morning, I was like, oh man, Maxar is up? Oh boy. So I just went and everything else was up too. I was like, oh man. So I started working on that email. Lost a few pennies in writing that email. So you're welcome. <laughs> um, but here's the five minute chart. This is really what I wanted to get out uh, was right here, 790. But uh, anyway, small little gain, nice move, pretty overall pop. And so we're out of max R entirely again, more or less for break even. But we didn't lose an R. Did not lose an R in that trade. That was very close to getting stopped out. So that was. Really nice. Christmas came early, said Danny. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much coming early. And uh, why is it? It's so weird to me how an Excel sheet takes minutes to load sometimes. It just kind of blows me away. So swing trades, current month. Okay. Where's Max R? So here's Max R. And yeah, out of the trade, I forgot to do the update here. Let me see if I can click on this update because I did post this one 
max r swing trades. I'll post this one in trading view. And what I'm going to do is kind of plan on another pullback down to here to see if it can kind of repeat that double bottom. More or less the exact same thing it just did. So if we if we trade down again and do something like this, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna do it again. But this price, this time even lower. All right. That's what I'm gonna put in that worksheet. And then I'm gonna come back to this on Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday, Max R. All right, we're gonna come into here. Just FYI, got one penny away from getting stopped out. So if you want, look to exit for a very, very small gain tomorrow, and then I will reanalyze and reset up. Something like this. So that was that was the Maxar setup. Again, beautiful looking setup. So pretty. <laughs> so nice. Just immaculate rollover. Okay, anyway, that's pretty much what it is. So we'll come back and look at that later. That's Maxar. Cool, cool, cool. And then LK. So Jim Filman, I know you're in LK and Mick and a few other traders. And it got very close to our 2019 target. A lot of you actually didn't get the jokes, I'll tell you. I said yesterday that I'd make the target 2019, and for you guys who traded with me, you would know why. Does anyone know why I made that the target? The year, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's, tw it's 2019. I thought more people would get that. I thought like, oh, that's hilarious, Jeremy. Nope, no one laughed, not one person. <laughs> so. It did not hit that today, but you were able to exit for a profit. Again, a miserably small profit, but better than getting stopped out. And man, not placing the stop right below that tweezer bottom was genius. If you had placed it perfectly below that tweezer bottom, you would have gotten stopped out by pennies and then it would have bounced. Although I did not get back the loss that I took on the day trade on that day. I did not lose on the swing trade, which was nice. And uh, we still have about a month to go until earnings. So LK is going to kind of stay on the list as one that I might try again because it is kind of double bottomish, and we could keep bouncing. So I'm going to put that on the list for Monday. And bottom line, we're just going to come back to it later. So uh, Maxar LK down. All right, LK. So let's go look at Car. Check some little CAR. And this was one, this was the most profitable of the swing trades. Pretty random for Avis rental car to bounce like it did, but pretty cool, I guess. And again, if you're still in this trade, awesome. Could have exited at the high yesterday had we not moved the target. So if we didn't move the target, we would have hit the target yesterday at 29.89, but all good. So you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, if I was still in the trade, I'd still be in the trade. <laughs> uh, if you are still in, I think you could take your stop, probably move it up to at this point, a little bit above break even is what I would do if I were still in the trade on Avis. Here's the hourly chart. The hourly chart still does look pretty good. You know, you had that massive candle right there, but the buying came in nicely. So up to you on Avis, but again, that was a nice, really quick one and a half hours that we were up on, and Avis is done. Earnings November, nice little trade, quick momentum, I like it. All right, next on the list was Macy's, and Macy's was a much smaller win, but this was a half an hour. Not too bad, a little half an hour double bottom on Macy's. Again, doesn't look terrible. Inside candle, market's a little bit bullish, could pop, but per my normal protocol, just closing it out, locking it up, locking it in. And again, if anyone stays in these trades, just let me know. I'll be more than thrilled to kind of give you a perspective of what I would do from here. 
uh, on those trades. The other one was one that we got into yesterday, Stone Cold Steve Austin, ticker symbol S-T-N-E. Mo a lot of you did not exit this trade, and that's cool. No big deal. It was a very, very small win, uh, like a point three and a half hours or something, which honestly wasn't bad. I talked about this one yesterday, saying that I would get in and get out of it really quickly anyway. Some of you were still in that one. Awesome. No sweat at all. Just one of my rules that, again, if I'm in a bunch of swing trades and they all go profitable at the same time, I just closed out. That's worked better for me. Um, and that's that. Okay, so I can cancel that. But there we go. That's ST and E. And if I were still in this trade, I probably would have exited a partial today, just in general. And then I'd take the stop. And it is a retest gap. Yeah, so I wouldn't move the stop yet. Wouldn't move the stop yet. As much as I would want to, it hasn't retested, it hasn't formed a pivot. So white candle gapping up is a retest gap. That simple, that's it, end of story. So if you're looking at moving your stop on Stone Cold, maybe a little bit of a retest like that and then a higher move and then you can move the stop. So I'll keep the, uh, I'll keep this one in our thoughts and prayers <laughs> and just uh, keep an eye on it for anyone who else is still in. Uh, I'll put that on the list for Friday, which is tomorrow. I got some options expiring Friday and we'll also put on the list for Tuesday. All right, so that's S, T, and E. And then Micron's on the list later, so is Macy's. Let me move that over here. Micron. Micron wasn't terrible on the options trade, actually. You got about 10, 20 cents out of it. This still looks good, but again, it was just, it was a profitable one. We, we were up a percent and a half. On Micron, we pulled back, we're retesting. This is a really, really nice inside candle. Keep your eyes peeled on Micron. I will certainly keep an eye on this one for you guys. If you did exit this profitable position, my plan stipulates that if I have a big day, the very next day I can only risk one R for, swing, uh, for day trades. And today was a big day. And specifically, it calls out Friday. <laughs> So my plan says if I have a really big day and I'm up large, I can only risk one R, especially if the next day is Friday. So I'm gonna be really careful, cautious tomorrow not to give anything back. But if Micron does break out, this could be a really, really good move. So we're gonna come back to this one for the weekly options newsletter and or just a regular old options trade. We will find out how we approach it, but that's really gonna be about it. Falco says you deserve a milkshake after today. Thank you, Falco. I do deserve it and I promise you, man, 48 hours from right now, I'm going to crush just the most monstrosity of a milkshake. So I've been milkshakeless for like three and a half weeks. <laughs> I've already lost weight, man. It sucks. No milkshake, lose two pounds. Or it could have been the really stupid hill sprints I've been doing. Oh, I almost threw up today, guys. I do not like hill sprints. Just running as fast as you can up a hill a bunch of times is just miserable. All right, anyway, cool candle, inside candle, ready for a little bit of a breakout, watch it closely, and let's see what happens on Micron. But again, per the plan, I'm out on Micron for a very small win. I think that's it, LK, Maxar, Macy's, Micron, and Stone Cold. Yep, okay. ST and E, got it. So then let's go look at Costco really quick because we're gonna have to cancel Costco. So Costco, C-O-S-T. So here is Costco. And Costco was a really, really beautiful, just serendipitously gorgeous pullback. Such an obvious by the dip. I mean, a one-winged blind pigeon named Ferdinand could have taken that pullback. We tried it, we set it up, and it just did not pull back far enough, which I can live with. I'm okay with that. 
Not a big deal. I mean, we tried. Wasn't we weren't afraid. We just didn't get filled. I can see why we did pull back to the ten and bounce. I was just thinking maybe we'll pull back to the twenty. So we threw the order out there and it just did not fill. So we're gonna have to cancel Costco on the swing trade. So that's pretty much the only update on that one that we need to make. Let's just cancel that. So let me come in here, cancel Costco. Good try though, team. Beautiful little trend, nice little move. Data dog DDOG has been all over the place. Straight up, this one's gonna be fun, fun, fun. It's fun, 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 fun. There's already volatility in this thing, man. It's gonna be a wild stock for a bit. I don't know how long that volatility is gonna last, but I like volatility. Great gap the other day and a nice little retest today. I don't know how I'm gonna play it right now. It does look a little bit bullish. If I'm Day trading it or short-term swing trading it, there's a lot of opportunities on this one. I'm gonna put on my list just to see if it can gap up tomorrow. So Friday morning, data dog. All right, DDOG, we'll just see. If it gaps up, could be a nice little retest, a little bit of a potential like double bottom in the making. So we'll see. All right, that's pretty much it on Datadog. And then the next ticker is Johnson & Johnson. Now, I like this trade so much that we're just gonna leave this one open. Got a bunch of upper, you got a bunch of upper shadows. You got an upper shadow today, yesterday, the day before. I've already mentioned if I'm wrong on this trade, I'm gonna try to play it twice. December has a covered call expiring in November and she won't be upset getting called away at 139. There's actually nothing wrong with that uh, covered call location at all. I really do like it. Good spot, good level. So Johnson, Johnson, we will remain open just because as it pulls back farther at that point, the moving averages will be closer and closer. So we really don't have that much risk out there. So we've canceled Costco. And Johnson Johnson, we're gonna leave open. Here's your long-term moving averages. Again, so we're pretty much just saying to pull back into those averages. Here's what the hourly chart looks like. And hourly chart for right now looks good. So we'll come back and look at it tomorrow. If it doesn't trigger tomorrow, depending on what it looks like, I might do a little bit of a lower entry just to see if we can get it for two or three pennies lower. Okay, so that's Johnson & Johnson. Next on the list is Pin Interest, as some people say, which is kind of funny. So Pinterest, Pin Interest, Pin Terrorist. We missed the entry again. I did 25.37, the low is 25.48. And what's interesting is if I had left the order alone at 25.50, we would have filled, and this would have been another 0.2 R's that would have gone in my favor today. So this would have been another winning swing trade that I would have exited today. But I didn't, we didn't get filled. This is a really nice setup. I don't necessarily want to be in it at this point if it does pull back stronger than this. So all is good. We're gonna come in and cancel it. Now I know that Steven's in with some options. Thomas is in with some put sales. I do have longer term shares as an investment. I'm not ter terribly terrified or upset or afraid if Pinterest goes higher. I can say though, if Pinterest gaps down on earnings and opens below 2285, it's gonna be an absolute storm of selling. I mean, oh boy. And if we gap up on earnings, at this particular point in time, it's almost unquestionably going to fade. So we'll see. But again, I'm just buying shares for the longer term haul, folks. Being patient, accumulating, <clears throat> both Ashley and myself are, and uh, just waiting it out. All right, next on the list is Boeing, ticker symbol BA. Boeing. Wow, that looks really nice. Boeing is chilling. 
Hmm. Right now, actually, really quick. Okay. Shooting her a quick message about Pinterest. <laughs> I was like, hey, we need to get in some puts if it opens too low. All right. So, uh, yeah, Boeing, I mean, same, same thing applies on this one. I'll post it probably next week sometime as we get closer. The 23rd, 24th of the month is going to be insane on options. Mike K is in on Pinterest at 25.66. All right, man, right on. So, again, just in and out, nice and quick on Pinterest. Take quick gains. If it starts showing any sign of weakness, just take some profits because earnings are about two weeks away on Pinterest, so just keep that in mind. Boeing, we're going to look at it definitely next week. Uh, let's put it on the list for, let's say, Wednesday. Boeing, and we'll put on the list for Thursday, Boeing. So if it gaps up, it could really run nicely. We shall see. All right. Next on the list is United. And United, Robert Falco, a.k.a. Dr. Falconium, was looking at a bear call spread on United. So the crazy part is, Falco, if you're looking at a bear call spread, I'd probably also do a bull put spread because you're only getting like maybe one max two check marks for the bear call spread. Premium, maybe the amount of time, something like that. Because really the only thing that's stopping it is some FIB extensions, lower highs, and maybe resistance. So possibly three. Therefore, you probably also want to do a bull put spread in the direction of the trend and just kind of have an iron condor. So you can find some premium. I mean, the trend looks good. I'm like you, not a fan of United. I get it. But the trend is unarguable at this point. So nice channel. See if you can find the premium for the bull put spread uh, on a pullback or something, or just get into the condor if there's premium already available. And yeah, man, looks nice. Let me see if I pull this up. So let me just go look at the premium. Since earnings just happened, we might be able to do a December. All right, so December 100, 105, gross. Ninety-seven fifty has some money, but a one hundred one hundred five eighty seventy-five. I mean, we're we're stretching. <laughs> we have to go out till January. It's a little bit of a stretch. I'd wait. No money. Throw in the trash. All right, next on the list, FANG, F-A-N-G. And this is the bullish trade I was looking at, maybe just catching a quick little, quick little something, something, little pop right before earnings, maybe. Earnings on FANG according to Thinkorswim on November 6th. So we have some time. It did close like I wanted it to. Here's the hourly chart, and we will set that up on FANG. So the target will be right there. And we'll see if Diamondback Energy can pop. So $4 gain for about a $3 risk. And yeah, quick little in and out. If she pops higher, so we'll have one bull and one bear swing trade on energy. That's kind of nice. 2019, so DQ is the bear one, although that one might not fill. 85.21 with a stop loss at 81.93. And I think it's a good trade. And gap type, retest gap, opening is not triggered yet. And we'll throw that right in here. Come over here, 
new swing trade, new official swing trade, official swing trade. All right. So pretty much it just did what I wanted to do. It's at the, it's at a very strong bottom. It's at a good support. Earnings are close. Big bullish candle here, kind of like a wicked pair of candle. Two very two kind of high wave candles in a row. Volumes kind of coming in. Could be a quick little in and out type of play. The other one that we were talking about was DQ. And DQ, I'll leave it open for now, even though I do like that little upper shadow. It looks really pretty. That one could be one where maybe we win on both, right? So hypothetically, let's say that DQ runs really hard. So while DQ runs up, this thing hits our bearish entry. We hit our target there on DQ on Fang, and then it rolls over and we can lower the stop and maybe we win on both. I don't know. But right now I'll leave the entry, leave that set up on DQ for the present moment. Okay, next on the list was CBL. And this one was an interesting one because just the pressure that was building. CBL, whoo. Yep, that's gonna have to be um, a trade. Good old 20 cent risk on a swing trade. Yes, please. I'll keep that one for us. And Mick is going to get himself a freaking trader point if that one works. New official swing trade. Nice. Nice little cheapo. But it's got some volume. So this is not a penny stock. Penny stocks are just these garbage companies that don't have any volume at all. Uh, 135. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Setup quality. High risk, high reward. And this thing runs, retest gap and open. We'll throw that right there. So this is kind of similar to the trade that I did on Fran. Now I didn't set this one up. I did talk about it in a stock review actually on the 9th of October. I don't tell you guys about every single trade that I take, but this one, I mean the same exact thing. Look at that compression right there. Talked about doing the uh, doing the free trade review. Dowdy one took it, but entry was there, stop was there, exit there today. Uh, that was no, that was fun. So F R A N, kind of similar little approach. Good volume, just good candlestick pattern. Doesn't mean that the other one's going to work. It's just the same pattern. So maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Probably not, but we'll try it anyway. Okay. The big boy. Tracy said that was fantastic. Thank you. Apple, whoo, strong. <laughs> Here's why I'm laughing. As bullish as I am on Apple, I think you guys know that, right? As bullish as I am on Apple, I'm like, really, bro? No pullback? Oh, man. Tracy said that was frantastic. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's got to go down in the history books. That was amazing. Well done, Trace. That's, that should make your October right there. Quality pun. <laughs> quality. Speaking of quality puns, if anybody wants my Wednesday shirt, uh, it's out there for the world. I've bought two of them. Welcome to Wednesday. Look at that. How epic. I don't know why it has that like frame around it. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, there you guys go. I'll throw that in chat paint in case anybody wants a welcome to Wednesday. Jason says he missed it because he read it too frantically. <laughs> you guys have got to stop it. <laughs> You're too good. Falco says you're gonna wear that every Tuesday, right? I'll be uh, at least, at least every Tuesday. Dave says, does it ship to the UK? It does. It does ship to the UK. Uh, Dave, did you ever get the message uh, to chat with Josh? 
he reached out to you on Slack. I don't know if you saw it, but message this guy. He's also in the UK. He li- I forget exactly where he lives, but um, shoot him a message, man. You guys should hang out. He can't be far from you. Anyway. <laughs> Danny says, to be frank, we need that shirt. <laughs> Oh, you guys are doing, you guys are doing great. I didn't know what I was going to talk about on Apple. Oh, geez. That is too good. I'm just going to have to move on. I didn't know what I'm talking about on Apple. It's bullish. I don't know what to say. Southwest Airlines, LUV, high wave candle, earnings around the corner. It's an inside candle. And <laughs> this is pretty much what we got. Uh, long-term averages it's right in the middle hanging out doing its thing looking good a lot of compression coming in on southwest some really really good sideways movement just hanging out i'm really ready for earnings on this one and again late in the week next week next week's gonna be uh inc- fantastic it's gonna be really good. Tracy said, "This Halloween you should be Frankenstein." <laughs> oh man, you guys get me ever so often. It's just crushing it. Jason said, "Earning season's put me in a frenzy." Yeah, it is. I think we're the only trading room that does this, by the way. The, just the amount of puns, trading puns. I mean, I have to give the full credit goes to the pun master himself, Justin Linderman. Um, Southwest, yeah, we'll look at it next week, but I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen on earnings. Uh, maybe a gap up could be interesting. Really quick, pays, this one's already working for that straddle, it's already putting in work. So PAYS, $10 call and $10 put was a $2 debit. Uh, Pays up 7.3% today. Whew, there we go. So I talked about playing on a, on a, a shares and we could have, could have thought about it. I was really debating on getting in there with a stop down there. And I was like, you know what? I'll just play an options trade on it. Why not? So the cool part is if this thing can trade up to 13, this is a this is a very profitable trade. I should say very profitable. It's it's okayly profitable. Okayly, that's an actual word. All right. So pays is just doing this thing. Um I'm gonna talk Tesla. Although I'm not gonna go into depth into Tesla today. If you guys want my analysis on Tesla from this morning, just let me know, message me in Slack. I'll send you a video, uh, a, a, a recorded, talk about the analysis on it. Bottom line, I played it on like a 30 second chart because the gap was so money. So let me, I mean, Falco, you'd have been so proud on this thing, man. This was a Thomas Wong special. Look at this. Two minutes into market open, ready to go. I was hard stalking Tesla. And this was a two-hour trade, and I got I still got out early. Look at that volume. So this is two minutes into market open on a five-minute chart. So this is right before the one-minute candle goes. Poof. Now, full transparency, I did not have the bearish candle, uh, the bearish setup yet at this time. So the bullish one, ready to go because of the gap, right? So my thought was, if it breaks lower, then I'll just do a retest and you know, I'll get in short, we'll stop up there. And I probably would have probably would have moved my stop a little bit. If I just wanted to kind of let anyone know as quick as I could how I was playing Tesla, and then I forgot to post Netflix. And this was the Tesla move. I mean, that gap was fan. Tiestic. So you had the, uh, this was the pop, stop was right there and got out right there. Again, could have gotten two R's, 
left a good half an hour on the table. Tracy said, I didn't even know they had a 30 second chart. Whew. Whew. Not for the faint of heart, Trace. They got a one second chart, but this is a 30 second chart. <laughs> I was ready. Now what I mean, I did not, so let me rephrase, I did not play this on a 30 second chart. You just have to look at a 30 second chart to see what I played. Otherwise you won't see it. But here it is right there. So there's, there's, the, there's the pop, that's when I was typing it. So as I was typing in the trade, this candle was still bearish. So that candle was still bearish as I was typing it in. And then when I submitted it, it had popped above and then it retested. So someone might've caught it, but I didn't put any of my trades into the worksheet today because I don't think anyone caught my setups or even close to my setups. So I didn't, I didn't share any of that, but yeah. Good stuff, good move, great gap. Tesla, if you guys want the recording, just let me know and I'll send it to you. Other than that, earnings are next week. I'm fired up to the gills. Ready for a pullback. Tesla, folks, just start getting ready. Start getting ready. The breakout is coming on Tesla. It's starting to happen. It's starting. The volume is too good. We've already taken out all of the short sellers from last earnings. We're closing below. Volume is increasing. We're making higher lows and higher highs. We're breaking above all the long-term moving averages. Sorry to say, but I trade Tesla all the time. I back trade it all the time. I spend hours in front of this thing every day. Tesla's going to start going higher. I don't know what's going to happen on earnings, but either way, whatever it does, it's going to go up. After it gaps down, it's going to end up fading higher. And if it gaps up, it's just going to scorch the earth. Don't worry. We'll start seeing Tesla back in that 300. And then we're coming back to that 400 mark before we know it. All right, Tesla looking great. <laughs> and then there was Netflix. Whew. All right, folks. Same exact thing. If you need a video, me discussing Netflix, let me know. That video includes both Tesla and Netflix, uh, along with AMD and NVIDIA and a few others. But Netflix is the most obvious fade of all time. Type in a three. If I literally said that yesterday, I'll type in a three because I did. I said Netflix is going to be a very obvious fade. Let it trade up, let it go a little bit higher, and then fade it down. End quote. So you guys all know how I played it. It doesn't really matter how you played it. Uh, if you were short later in the afternoon, you won on it. I want to give so many shout outs though, because some people played this long right here. Some people played it short right here. And if you're a true hero, you shorted somewhere in here. Unless you're Robert Falco, you don't do anything. So other than Robert Falco, everyone else made money on Netflix today. So you guys are welcome to kind of like poke fun at him. <laughs> just in case you've ever seen a deer in the headlights poor old dr falco just on the on the lines oh nope sorry sorry he's right he's right and i'm wrong he did make money because he sold a put so there you go you're not totally left out in the rain you're not you're not left out in the rain man you got some puts he's paying for some subscriptions <laughs> there you go you're coming out the woodwork so scott mckay missed it graham missed it it's okay guys it's, it's all good if you missed it don't sweat it this there'll be many 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 opportunities um uh, type in so jason you don't have you haven't done your october challenge yet i want you to do it on netflix scott i think you've done the october challenge um you haven't all right do it on netflix Graham, I don't know if you've done the October challenge, but if you want, do it on Netflix. Jason says, what is it again? Let's type in, let's see if the Slack bot knows. Let's see what the Slack bot says. October challenge. There he goes, Slack bot. 155 miles on a bike. Post a video review of a trade setup taken in October. Donate to a children's charity. There you go. So do this one, post a video review of you back trading Netflix or Microsoft or whatever else. But ladies and gentlemen, this was a great trade. 
even if you played it simply. What I, what, what I mean by simply, uh, even if you just played the five minute bullish candle breakdown, that was the most simple of the trade. That's like the most basic kindergarten 101. You know, you put vinegar and baking soda and you make a volcano of profits. Like that's, that's Netflix. So you would have shorted here, stop up there, candy, baby. And you're just taking it. If you trade anything else, it was a little bit aggressive. You know, so good for you. It depends on what you play. So Danny says, I need to implement forward trading. Yeah, man. Uh, all right. So what is Netflix going to do from here? Hmm. Well, we retested the 50 very nicely. I think we're going to go higher. So here's what I'm planning. Any bullishness on Netflix in the next two or three days, hashtag, I buy it. I love some Netflix. That's a nice retest. Good volume. Came down to the 50. Long-term moving averages, we haven't hit them yet. Although, if you're a 105 EMA fan, if you're in that cult, look at this. The 105 on Netflix is like the greatest average of all time. Can you believe that, Scott McKay? Like a random moving average that was totally randomly created during the retreat. Look at this. Look at this. Insane. It's incredible. 30 minute 105, you're still above it. So here's what I would love to see on Netflix. Retest, trade just a little bit higher and then blink. That's what I would like to see. If we gap up tomorrow, good to go. And then here's the five minute 105, we traded right down to it today. So yes, Netflix could definitely gap up and start having some bull moves, just letting you all know. All right. Next on the list is Amazon. I didn't do anything on Amazon today. It was a good gap. It really was. You just had three white candles in a row and then we gapped up and then we traded down to the 200 simple moving average and we just kind of pinged and ponged around. You know, so you, you might've been able to take something on Netflix. I'm not, or sorry, uh, Amazon. You could have maybe gotten in here and made something. This is when the gap filled and you kind of retested the previous high of the day. It wasn't a bad gap. It was just a lot of white candles in a row and it was kind of right around the 200 simple. The first candle was a huge bearish candle. So that probably gave you some insight onto what it was gonna do. And it did it, uh, you know, that was pretty much it. So what from here, obviously earnings right around the corner on Amazon. I don't have any positions on Amazon. I heard Scott has a share or two of Amazon and it did not hit the 100 simple, unfortunately. Just know that it could easily gap down below this support. And if it does, the whole market's going to have a little bit of a sell-off. Otherwise, I would throw in a puke order to pick up a share or two. If you have a larger account looking at picking up a share of Amazon, put in a limit by like 1673. Very similar to what I did on Netflix over earnings. Just throw in a limit sell. Let it fill after hours, not a big position, you know, and if Amazon thing is, even if you just do one share on Amazon, it trades down to 1673 fills and bounces up to 1800. I don't know. I'm not that great at math, but that's $120. Even if it's just one share. Cool. Next on the list, Roku, Donna, my girl, way to play Roku. So Roku had a gap and go yesterday, had a pullback. And again, we tried to get in bullish, guys, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I did my best. We missed it by 20 cents yesterday. It was the perfect setup, and I just missed it by 20 pennies. Wonderful setup. Roku was just a dominant little animal today. It took out the hive yesterday. It was just a great, great continuation play. Remember those continuation plays? Jason? Roku was money on the spot, dude. Broke all the moving averages, got above moving averages, S-curved, bye-bye. 
simple. This stuff is easy. It's just hard. All right. So anyway, I mean, Roku is back to doing what Roku's been doing. Cool. <laughs> How high is this wave three going to go? I have no earthly idea. No clue. So uh, can it go higher tomorrow? Yep, it can. It has a few more days left of bullishness. And really, we're coming to try to fill this little gap over here. And then once it does that, I mean, I really have no idea what it's going to do. But Roku, getting some upgrades, strong little trend, looking good. All right, Facebook, took some little FB. Nothing really happening on Facebook today. For the most part, it's just out of resistance. It's at this little trend line. A gap tomorrow morning on Facebook will be really pretty. Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, truly has zero exposure to the whole China thing. Not one itsy bitsy ounce. None. So they're not impacted by this. So this anytime that Facebook is selling off because of the China market sell off, I just shake my head. So this one's going to have some rallies to it. It has, it has some higher to go and they're going to crush earnings. They're going to obliterate earnings. That doesn't mean it's going to gap up, but it will be going higher over time. They are going to dominate earnings. I know personally many people who are still spending money on Facebook and Instagram. And now, like I told you guys, I told you this would happen. I was doing an advertisement on one of my posts the other day and you can now include WhatsApp messages. So I can message people in WhatsApp automatically through Facebook messaging, or sorry, through Facebook advertising, I can start messaging people on their WhatsApp, on their device. Pretty cool stuff, right? So I can start advertising that way, getting you know, real life trading out in front of other people internationally on WhatsApp. That's what's up, as Falco says. So yeah, I mean, it, it's happening. It's really cool, they're gonna dominate, they're gonna do so well in earnings, they're gonna make so much cash. It's amazing. All right. I'm not super far behind. NVIDIA, so NVDA, just working on pulling back some. It's in the bullish trends. We're just retesting a little bit, right? We're getting some pullbacks. That's because we took out a very, very obvious resistance. And this is where all the newbies are buying. You know, so me, 10 years ago, loading up on call options. All of the calls right here. This is where I get in bullish. And I'm not saying we're not going to go higher. I'm just saying we're most likely going to hang out and trade sideways, which is exactly what people want if you got shares of NVIDIA. And shout outs to my boy, Tim Gordon. John says, any Canadians living in Ontario? That's a great question. I'm sure there's some. Uh, look at this, Tim, Tim G, 39 hours for October, mostly off of an NVIDIA position that he's been holding for a few months. That just means he's been buying shares, ladies and gentlemen, accumulating over time. So buying shares and accumulating. So anyway. So that's, that's NVIDIA, I mean, and I do think she's gonna to continue to go higher. Long-term moving average, we're just gonna pause here for a little bit. So NVIDIA, for me being bullish, I'm gonna wait. Buy as low as you can for NVIDIA. All right, next on the list, AMD, building some pressure. Beautiful inside day candle on AMD. Good golly gee whiz, this is nice. So, so, so pretty. Put your eyes on the prize. If, NV or if AMD gaps up tomorrow, woo, I'm going to make some money on that trade, or at least lose small. That's going to be gorgeous. If it gaps down, I'll pretty much do the exact same thing. Got a put sale, going to expire worthless on Friday. AMD's hanging out, and again, it's just bullish to neutral right now. Bullish to neutral, very, very fun stock to buy shares of. Uh, you know, 1,000 shares at a time and just sell some covered calls higher. This is one of the favorite stocks to do it on. 
I don't have any position on it. I'm trying to. I tried to do it. So never got put any shares. Haven't got put shares for a while. So AMD. <clears throat> this is a half an hour down here, and it's a fun one, man. Just buy as low as you can. Thousand shares. I mean, if you bought a thousand shares at twenty eight, let's say twenty nine. Thousand shares at twenty nine is at thirty one. I don't know about you guys. It's two dollars per share. It's two thousand dollars. It's everywhere you slice it. That's just math. Next on the list, Uber, straight up double bottoming. About to 10x. <laughs> We're gonna see what it does on earnings. <clears throat> earnings is a ways away. And I expect them to have absolutely outrageously awful earnings. But it's gonna take some time for them to kind of regroup. And uh, yes, they, they've estimated to lose 83 cents a share. Last estimate was 318 and a dollar is just gonna be brutal. So as long as they don't lose billions of dollars, uh, they'll slowly start adapting uh, and catching some bids. Weekly chart, I mean, it's a really nice looking candle. I know a few of you have some put sales on Uber and cool. One of my good friends, I got, I got a lot of good friends who are just buying 10 shares every week or two. Sorry, not every week. Aaron Tomlin is about to come over to my house any minute. He's buying 10 shares a month on Uber, whatever the price. At the month, end of his paycheck period, all that kind of good stuff, he's a real estate agent, he just buys 10 shares. So he bought 10 shares here, 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 and he'll buy 10 shares in October. I like Uber. Uber Freight is going to do stuff. Justin says, do you have a video explaining to non-millennials what all these Facebook applications are and what makes them so integrated? That would be swell. Linderman, you're, dude, you're pretty much a millennial. <laughs> you're close, man. Uh, I don't have any videos on that yet. There are plenty of videos on Facebook out there about it. However, uh, purely, I'm trying to figure out what I'm saying, but Full disclosure, I do have a really cool webinar coming up if you're interested in stuff like that. I haven't emailed anything out about this yet. I've only posted on Slack, but there's a little bit of a link right there. If you guys want, I'm gonna be talking about a pretty cool application that I've used for a while that you can start working on creating passive income. It's not an MLM, okay? It has nothing to do with selling essential oils. And in fact, it has nothing to do with selling in general. You don't have to sell beans, okay? Nothing at all. If you want to try it out, the link's in the chat pane, or you can go to jeremynewson.com forward slash passive income. I'll be sending out emails out about it later, but it's going to be in next Thursday. So next Thursday, I'll talk about it. Anyone with a skill can create passive income. Very useful. You guys will love it. Linderman says he does not know what, what app, WhatsApp is. So Linderman, um, go to your app store and just search WhatsApp. It's pretty much a international messaging device. That's, that's really it, man. So international messaging device. You can get a text message from anyone in the world and direct message them without any fees if you have Wi-Fi. So it's kind of cool. All right, Uber, done. So just a few more. Uh, Square, took a simple SQ. Square slowly creeping higher. It's coming. So Square slowly getting back up there. It's just battling the 100 simple on a weekly chart. Nothing really interesting to see on Square other than I do like the trend. The trend is starting to come together. And again, this gap will fill, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever information you want to take from that, it'll fill. Just a matter of time. How the money call options. It'll fill. All right, EA, EA Sports. So EA did get a cute little gap up today. Earnings is around the corner. It's a nice gap. Obviously, EA has been very, very sideways, and it could pull back and get a little bit of a dip opportunity. The 200 simple is still battling it. We're going to come over and look at EA more uh, later next week. But this – Trend looks really good. Chart looks really good. Long-term moving averages look really good. We'll find out what EA does later, but presently, it's pretty sideways. 
All right, Adobe. Adobe is hard on my watch right now for a potential continuation lower. This actually was a decent gap down and I do have an iron condor on it. There's nothing that says I can't play it bearish between now and the bottom of that condor. This is a pretty good gap. And then you got a bearish engulfing candle right after it. So I'm gonna watch Adobe for about another day or so. We're gonna have it on the list for tomorrow. You can pretty much rest assured that Adobe will probably retest and do something like this. So you can watch it for some bulls tomorrow because Adobe has been extremely bullish for a while. But looking at ADBE as it trades sideways, I love it as it trades sideways. I'm just gonna watch it for one or two more days just to see if we can take a breakdown of the bearish move. So what day is today? So I'll put that on the list for tomorrow. All right, a few more. Mongo database, MDB. Andrew has some put sales. Bob has some put sales. Mongo sitting right on top of those put sales. You did get a retest gap. And I still think these cloud applications are gonna rain down lower because the, the bears kind of look in control. The chart patterns look really ugly. Looks like a nice kind of uh, head and shoulder-ish pattern. I don't know, I don't know. So Mongo, you do have a retest gap right here. There's a lot that could happen with Mongo. I mean, this could turn into an inverted head and shoulders pattern and we go higher or it could start rolling over. I truly don't know. So I'm gonna stay away from Mongo right now. Just give that one space, let it do its thing. We'll come back and look at it later. Not entirely sure what Mongo's gonna do. PayPal, earnings around the corner. I like PayPal. I'd like it to go down a little bit more, but I don't know what PayPal is going to do on earnings. Obviously, I never know anything for sure. But if PayPal can gap up on earnings, I think it'd be a strong gap. And there's absolutely room for it to move. So if we can start seeing what happens and PayPal gaps up a little bit, this is a nice little candle today. I really would be just watching for a follow through on PayPal tomorrow. It looks really cute. In fact, I'm gonna jot that down. PayPal tomorrow morning might be one of the stocks on my list. One of the, th one of the additional, you got three and then adding one more. So PayPal, small gap up, maybe would be a little bit bullish uh, tomorrow and then we'll find out what happens. All right, FTV, what is this? Fortive Corporation? No idea, but it's bouncing. Fortive. Wow, look at that support. Jiminy Christmas. So Fortive, ticker FTV. I would look to buy a pullback. Zip, zip, something like that. This is the weekly chart we're looking at. Phenomenal support right there. Really good candle. Dividend payer. And it's in a distribution phase already. Big distribution phase. So it's gonna chop around and trade sideways for a while. Rest assured on that, but buy the dip if you're looking at playing FTE. And then APHA. I got an interesting play on APHA, my friends. A very interesting play. I'm not gonna make this one official. I'm just gonna say what I'm planning on doing. But if APHA breaks above 5.11, then I'm gonna buy some absolute zero January $5 calls. Dan, $5 calls. And that'll be probably 70 cents maybe. Not a big risk. You had a really good gap the other day. We already broke lower and you got this really cute little high wave candle. So just in case we pop out of here and run up to seven or 750, which is very reasonable, those options could double, triple even. And this is the weekly chart. You do have some support down here. So a lot of the weed stocks, AKA alternative harvesting, AKA Mary Jane's best friend, 
CGC had a really nice move today. I'm expecting this one to get a little bit more love tomorrow. You had a really good gap, good volume, a little bit of an upper shadow. I'm going to put CGC in my list to continue higher tomorrow. I mean, the pressure starting to come in. It looks nice. Really good gap. I got a put sale at 18, and that's going to expire brilliantly at Worthless tomorrow. Going to Options Heaven. Fired up about that. That'll be a nice, healthy uh, half an hour as well. A little bit more than half. And uh, yeah, that's it. So tomorrow, looking at about an R worth of options premium. Pablo says, Jay, as you always say, buy stocks of things you like. I like Porsche. I made some R's on it. Ticker PHA3. Porsche is publicly traded? No way. Ah, different one. I was about to say, different exchange. That makes tons of sense. Well, Pablo, you just taught me something new, man. Makes sense it's publicly traded, but I have, I've never looked at it before. I wonder if I can pull it up. I should be able to. I wonder if I can try this one. Hmm. Maybe this one. Weird. Looks like that one's the one I can pull up. Okay. Uh, they own uh, Volkswagen and they hold like 60% of the shares. I'm all about that, man. I'm glad they like Porsche. Do you own one? Big Porsche fan? Publicist. is nah. All right. Well, hey, man. Get at me. Shoot me an email. I can help you buy a Porsche. Might not be the dream. Porsche might not be the, the Porsche of all Porsches, but dude, there's all kinds of Porsches up here in the States for a pretty reasonable price. They really are, man. I was looking at Rolls Royces the other day. I found like a really nice one for like 150,000, but Porsches, dude, I mean, you can get, there's, there's some, dude, $40,000. You can find a good Porsche. I'm sure somewhere. I'm sure somewhere you can get one. Anyway, we can talk about that later. Uh, PHA3 looks good, man. Trend looks nice. We'll definitely look at it again tomorrow. And anytime you want me to look at that, let me know. But yeah, absolutely. Buy the dip. Trend looks nice. And it is. It's Porsche. They're a hot commodity right now. People love them. In the exotic car world, man, they are hot, hot, hot. Oh, this is a made three R's. Gorgeous. I love it. Jason says, I want the Lambo SUV. Man. Mm. Just get the Model X, man. Just get the X. It's faster. It's better. <laughs> Less expensive. Yeah. All right, folks, that's it for me. What do you guys want to look at tomorrow? Here's what I got on the list. The trade desk, H-I-I-Q, M-U, A-M-D, C-G-C, W-P-M, Zoom, S-T-N-E, Johnson & Johnson, Adobe, P-A-H-3 from my boy Pablo, Capital One Finance, Tesla, TLT, Dave says, will the passive income work in the UK? It will, but if it doesn't, I'll refund you. But yeah, it will. I'm 99.9999% positive. Because it's just a website, it's a worldwide international site. So, yep, I am very positive it does. And if it doesn't, it's, it's $11. So, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll refund you, man. I'll refund anyone if you don't like it, but it's good. It's good. It's, it's going to be a really, really nice platform. I think you guys will love a lot of the programs and information I'll be sharing. All right, team, that's it for me. I'm done. Thanks so much for being here. You rock. And until next time, love life, love life, and trade life.